I've always been involved in IFA for the last 25 years from the time I left Mark on the firm and I could see a great uh, value in the association, how it delivered for farmers. And I think over the last 10 to 15 years, we've taken two passive approach in how we represent farmers. There's an awful lot of farmers around the country in all sectors feel that we haven't represented them ad adequately. I get it. Uh, it's our own policy formation, it's about how hard we drive on for farmers and for me, put my name forward for the presidency is about rectifying that. Well I want to be the next president of the Irish Farmers Association because I want to restore the respect for farmers, the position that we once had in society where we were valued, or we felt valued much more than we do today. Uh, valued for the economic contribution we made to rural Ireland, but also valued for the environmental contribution that we made. Uh, it's, it, it pains farmers that continuously now all of the commentary around farming is negative in any conversation around the environment. It's so unfair and so untrue. I think we desperately need to modernise our association. Many people say to me that we need to bring our association back to where it was 20, 30 years ago. I would argue that instead of bringing it back, we need to modernise it and bring it forward, make it fit, uh, fit for purpose in 2023 and for the years ahead. Um, I think we need to change our method of communication hugely firstly with our members so that we listen better to what the members on the ground have to say and find better ways of bringing that message forward and having it reflected in our policies. I also believe strongly that the conversation that is had on our national airwaves, uh, in our print media and in social media needs to reflect much more positively the contribution that farming and agriculture makes to society in general. Unquestionably we've got to be more proactive about how we formulate policy how we get into various government departments, the European Union, put forward our, 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 our proposals that you know, will, will impact in a positive way on farm, farm income. Um, I don't believe we've been doing that. Um, we tend to wait till something's decided and then have a cut at it. At that stage, it's too late. You haven't really been able to uh, uh, impact on the core issues or the core, the core principles of whatever policy government or European Union are trying to bring forward. So I think that's the biggest change we'd have to make and if you, if, you, if you get that done and you can deliver for farmers, farmers across the board then would see a value in the association and that negativity that surrounds IFA and it does and I get it particularly if you go up to the west of Ireland, suckler, beef and sheep farmers feel that they've been left to the side of the road by the association. I think they come with us. It's about being more proactive in how we formulate policy um, we need to do, we need to be more, uh, we need to come together in the association better, uh, join, the, join the links in the association, listen to people on the ground, get their ideas implemented into policy and then get that policy, uh, uh, you know, implemented at government and EU level. I think if you do that, um, people will see that, the, people will back you and see a value, in the, as I said already, in the association. I think, to be fair, consumers in Ireland back Irish farmers. Uh, every indicator to me says that consumers want to buy Irish food. Our, our retailers genuinely seem to sell Irish food as a priority. The difficulty for me is the message in the, in the mainstream media. The sense that politicians aren't willing to be complementary to the quality of what we do. Uh, and that comes back once again to the environmental message. The message that is out there that all too often what we're doing in agriculture is a primary reason for damage to the, to the climate, to the environment, to our water. It needs to be reflected, and people need to consider this, that on a global scale, Irish agriculture is up there with the very best uh, in producing food from an environmental efficiency point of view. Changes do need to be made. We need to be better from an environmental point of view, but the conversation need to, needs to be had in the context of how good we are and what changes need to be made to make it even better, rather than the ongoing message that we sense around, it's all about the damage that we do. Absolutely, if it comes to delivering for members, delivering for farmers, delivering for farming and agriculture in general. It's about getting that balance right, whereby the IFA must always back the members that are in trouble, the sectors that are doing particularly badly on any given year. This year, there's particular pressure on the grain sector, on the sheep sector. Next year, it may very well be different. So that's one part of what we do. We need to back individuals who get themselves in difficulty. For example, individuals now and again might have a difficulty with bank debt. We need to support those. But we also need to support agriculture as a whole. We need to have a positive plan around how agriculture is going to go forward. And by having that plan, 
we can influence the people who make the decisions to be much more positive and proactive in looking after agriculture going forward. Unquestionably, no question about that. Um, uh, you know, despite the fact that I, I'd say we need to drive on, on, on harder, which we always do, we have delivered in, 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 in numerous ways for, for farmers through our work on taxation, through the work on the environment, nitrates, uh, uh, delivering on various schemes. But I do feel that over the last 10 to 15 years we could have done more. And if you get in earlier uh, with your ideas, you have a greater chance of getting them implemented. But then there's a responsibility when you do that, you have to be prepared to go out and sell them to your own members and they might not suit everybody, but you know that's the price that comes with getting in there, putting your ideas in, and it's better than not being in there. Very, very important. Finance to the association are very, very challenged at the moment. I think, um, and we know that particularly for the last six, six to eight months, we should have been more proactive in how we dealt with it. The issue of finances should have been dealt with much earlier in the year. We have a put in the long foot now till after the election, but it will certainly be in the short term a combination of, uh, you know, uh, cost cutting and, and, and a membership increase. But I think down the road we've got to look at how we're going to finance the, the association, make sure it's properly funded, that we can be in a position to represent farmers and do whatever we need to do to get delivery on policy. And certainly if you look at the farm centre in Dublin, I'd always like to see a, pre a, a presence uh, in Dublin, it's our capital city, and we represent every every you know every parish, every corner of the country. But I think the farm centre uh, will have to look at how that's going to play a part in the association going forward, because you know we're working from home now, and people not not, not been in it on a, on a full time basis. It's very very quickly becoming not fit for purpose. First of all, it must be said that our our balance sheet is in a strong position. Uh, we are at this moment in time we have a difficulty around. Uh, inflation and the way costs have risen and that's no different to any other sector of the economy. Um, so yes decisions will have to be made in the coming months about getting that balance right again so that we can bring our expenditure uh, in line with the income that we have from our membership and for our levy. And, and I've no doubt uh, Francis that will be done, that that decision will be made. Uh, from a point of view of future proofing, again it's about making sure that members feel they get value, that members feel represented and members feel a sense of pride that they have an organisation representing them. Some of that's down to the, the inability of us or the, or the lack of focus that we have in the association of actually talking about all that we deliver. It's important for us to have a headquarters and it's important for us to have a presence in Dublin that's uh, relatively near to the centre of power. Um, I, I believe the Farm Centre has been a hugely positive uh, resource for us to have in the IFA um, and I don't see that there's a need for us to change it. Well unquestionably income is always the key one, everything revolves around income but currently there's no doubt that the next biggest challenge we face is uh, everything environmental related, um, how regulation is going to affect farmers on their farm um, and then getting that message out around the, you know, the positivities of, of our industry we produce food for 40 million people in a, in a more sustainable way than most places in the world. We have a perfect climate for producing food. We irrigate very, very little bar, maybe some of our horticulture crops. And we have a good story to tell and we're not getting that out there. Um, so that's a hugely important issue. Um, uh, and how we communicate that, not just to the general public, but to our own members. And a lot of the time, our own members might be fully aware of what we're doing. And you know, if you have your own members fully informed about the issues of the day, it's actually the strongest lobbying tool we have because once it becomes an issue on the kitchen table, it becomes an issue for, for everybody. The lack of respect that we sense that we get, as I mentioned already, uh, for, farming, for, for, the, for the IFA and for farmers in general, there is, there is this, a growing sense that unity is lost. There's too many farming organisations from a point of view of maximising uh, the, the, from a point of view of maximising the impact that farmers can have in policy decision, uh, there's a lack of unity among the sectors, a lack of a sense that we have far, far more in common than divides us. And, and the third one I would say, as always, is the inability for farmers to choose for themselves to have the freedom with all of the environmental drivers that are there the focus on the government of driving farmers down the road of, 
of getting into sectors that they might not necessarily. That's a big challenge as well. And of course, always we have to have a focus on getting a fair return from the marketplace and making sure the supports that we get are fairly distributed.